and mechanically ventilated patient tracheostomy was done so patient was on mechanical ventilation tracheostomy was done for long duration mechanical ventilation we try to uh, do a tracheostomy for a better pulmonary toileting endotracheal tube used for short term ventilation tracheostomy tube same indication we when patient has to go for long term ventilation which is the best tracheostomy tube so best tracheostomy tube in mechanically ventilated patient answer is cuffed tracheostomy tube cuffed tracheostomy tube got my point so answer has to be cuffed tracheostomy tube got it why because this is the trachea this tracheostomy tube if there is no cuff then a very good seal for ventilation cannot be achieved so mechanical ventilation always through the cuff tube it will give us two things one a good seal for ventilation and it will also prevent the aspiration so always cuffed tube uncuffed tube is not preferred for prolonged ventilation metallic tracheostomy tube is not at all used for patient on mechanical ventilation it cannot be attached to the circuit okay and fenestrated tracheostomy tube is used when we are encouraging vocalization in the patient okay so answer has to be cuffed tracheostomy tube okay you can see this is the cuffed tube this is uncuffed tube and this is the metallic tube okay this is used when a patient is on long term tracheostomy patient can breathe on their own we just have to keep the airway patent so this is the metallic tube this is the metallic tracheostomy tube okay okay metal tubes name jackson tubes it is constructed of silver or stainless steel so they are more rigid and they are typically cuffless they are typically you can see they are cuffless okay and they do not have a 15 mm hub for the mechanical ventilation and they can be sterilized multiple times and they can be used reuse 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 right so when a patient is on long term uh airway collapse is there and we have to keep patient on long term tracheostomy this metallic tube is preferred okay this is fenestrated tube this is used when we are encouraging uh voice production in the patient okay a fenestration is the hole in the curvature of the posterior wall of the tracheostomy tube now fenestrated tubes they are used designed to allow the airway flow through the fenestration for better voicing so for better voicing okay now all of the component are the score of quick sofa are component of quick sofa except so q sofa that is quick sofa sequential organ analysis quick sofa so we have three components in quick sofa number 1 respiratory rate above 22 we give 0.1 then systolic blood pressure below 100 we give 1 point and if gcs is below 15 we give 1 point okay these are the three things we see in quick sofa and if it is 2 and above then the uh, morbidity mortality risk is more more is the chances of prolonged hospitalization in the patient now heart rate above 150 is not included in quick sofa so d would be the answer so respiratory rate above 22 systolic blood pressure below 100 and gcs below 15 are the three component of quick sofa this is used as a bedside scoring system to predict in icu patient or sepsis patient risk of prolonged hospitalization okay next so quick sofa or so called quick sofa is a bedside prompt it identifies in the patient with suspected uh, infection who are at a greater risk of poor outcome and prolonged hospitalization three criteria one point for each low blood pressure high respiratory rate and altered mental mentation score 0 to 3 presence of two or more quick sofa points near at the near onset of infection is associated with greater risk of death and prolonged intensive care stay what we already discussed okay coming on the next question in neonatal resuscitation the positive pressure ventilation is given with fio2 off uh now how do we do neonatal resuscitation this is the flow chart for the neonatal resuscitation we identify the patient mother with the high risk of the delivered fetus requiring resuscitation so we have antenatal quickly is counseling and team is kept ready so birth happens and if the birth is term there is a good tone good cry yes then patient is handed over to the mother right for the care and feeding okay if it is not the so if it is not so then the child is made warm 
maintain the normal temperature, clear the secretion and just stimulate the child. If we do this and still the child is in apnea or gasping or heart rate is below 100, right? Then if with stimulation child has not started breathing, then we go for positive pressure ventilation. Now positive pressure ventilation is done with 21% room air, 21% oxygen and SpO2 is used to monitor the concentration of oxygen given to the child. Risk of retinopathy of prematurity is associated with high oxygen concentration. So, we start with 21% oxygen and we increase the oxygen concentration according to the SpO2. Okay? And if heart rate remains below 100 in spite of positive pressure ventilation, then we check, we again check for the whether a proper ventilation is being done or not. Then we check it and again ventilate. If still below 100, below 60, we intubate. We intubate the child. Okay? What my point? We intubate. So, neonatal resuscitation is done with FiO2 of 21%. Initially, it started with FiO2 of 21%. And increased oxygen concentration is according to the SpO2. We tighten it according to the SpO2. Okay? So, inflation and ventilation of lungs are priority in the newborn who need support after birth and the rise in heart rate is the most important indicator for effective ventilation. Most important indicator is rise in heart rate. Pulse oximetry guides the oxygen therapy and meets the oxygen saturation goals. Chest compression is not priority in neonate, ventilation is priority. Chest compression is only provided if poor heart rate responds to ventilation even after the ventilation corrective steps. Right? And we start the uh, chest compression and we preferably intubate the child. Okay. The heart rate response to chest compression and medication should be monitored by ECG, right? Rather than uh, auscultation, uh, rather than palpation of the pulse. If the response to chest compression is poor, it may be reasonable to provide epinephrine, then we provide the epinephrine. In, not like adult, immediately we start providing the epinephrine, right? And preferably via the IV route, if not possible, umbilical umbilical okay failure to respond to epinephrine in newborn we would go for plasma volume expansion we would give blood and we would go for volume expansion right so if for another 20 minutes after full resuscitation patient is not improving the child is not improving then we have to let's say counsel the family we have then we go for counseling of the family that most probably the resuscitation would not be successful okay so this is how we do neonatal resuscitation step by step okay thank you hello so let us discuss some previous year questions the first question identify the following equipment which is often used in covid 19 patient so this is a oxygen mask oxygen delivering mask which has a reservoir bag attached to it so this is oxygen mask with a reservoir bag this is a mask with reservoir bag reservoir bag okay and depending upon the valve between mask and the reservoir bag, it can be of two types, rebreathing and non-rebreathing, non-rebreathing, okay? So, what are the options? First is Venturi mask. No, Venturi mask has a Venturi barrel attached to it. In a moment, I will show you the Venturi mask. Then Hudson mask. Hudson mask is simple face mask. It's the other name of simple face mask, non-rebreathing mask. So, this is the correct option. So, answer is it is non-rebreathing mask. Nebulizer mask has a nebulizer container attached to it. So, this is not a nebulizer mask also. Answer is NRBM. NRM or NRBM, non-rebreathing mask or simply non-rebreathing mask. Okay. Okay. So, these are the different oxygen delivering devices. Um, we have oxygen delivering devices divided into low flow and the high flow type. In low flow, we have nasal cannula, face mask, and face mask with a reservoir bag. In high flow, we have venturi mask mostly, venturi mask. So, you see this, this is a mask with a reservoir bag attached to it, okay? These are the expiratory valve attached to it. So, this is how NRM, non rebreathing mask look. Now, this is a simple face mask, simple face mask. Okay, simple face mask, the tubing of the oxygen supply is opened in the mask itself and it has only the expiratory port for removing the expiratory gases. So, this is a simple face mask. Now, this is the Venturi mask I was talking about. 
venturi mask a high flow device with a venturi barrel this is venturi venturi barrel okay this is venturi barrel okay then as i told you this is non rebreathing mask that is face mask with a reservoir bag okay this is a niv mask there is non invasive ventilation non invasive ventilation mask no niv mask okay okay then this is a hfnc high flow nasal cannula high flow nasal cannula hfnc you can see these are the two nasal prong in both the nas it is attached to the high inspiratory flow tubing and this is the hfnc machine okay okay the next question identify the nerve being used for following monitoring this is neuromuscular monitoring neuromuscular monitoring where do we do neuromuscular monitoring we can do neuromuscular monitoring at any at let's say junction of any nerve and muscle right any neuromuscular junction we do it to see the adequacy of muscle paralysis okay any nerve can be monitored right we can monitor the ulnar nerve we can monitor radial we can monitor any nerve the most common is the ulnar nerve you can see here on the medial side of the upper limb two electrodes are placed which is the uh, site from which the ulnar nerve can be stimulated site of the ulnar nerve and this is the monitor by which we can send the current and we can see the response of the muscle contraction we can measure the contraction response so answer is ulnar nerve so neuromuscular monitoring these are the various sites common sites where we do neuromuscular monitoring ulnar nerve most commonly ulnar nerve this is the most common site here we see the movement on adductor pollicis muscle thumb adduction is what is seen right this is there is movement on this this adductor pollicis muscle then we can also monitor facial nerve and we see the response on the two muscle orbicalis auriculi oculi and corrugator supercilii right so twitching of the eyelid or eyebrow is what we see but this is not a very common sight because current is sent if some uh, injury etc happened thermal injury which is not let's say very good to happen on the face etc right then posterior tibial nerve is another site or the sural nerve and we see the effect on flexor hallucis brevis that is plantar flexion of the great toe see the response in the great toe the plantar flexion okay so these are the common site the commonest is ulnar nerve okay so there are various kind of stimuli used to n of 4 post tetanic the commonest is commonest stimuli used for neuromuscular monitoring is train of 4 train of 4 so this is you have to remember train of 4 stimulus is the commonest one which we use okay then uh, as you can see through this monitor these are the uh, electrode attached on the ulnar nerve cords we stimulate the ulnar nerve and we see the response in the adductor pollicis muscle okay okay Bo now tof correlates with the uh, strength of the muscle right if the tof ratio train of 4 ratio is 0.6 patient can lift both the leg but it is not sufficient for the protection of the airway so 0.6 is not a good tof to extubate a patient for patient lifts the head for more than 5 second again the tof would be 0.6 or maybe 0.7 patient has a normal hand grip strength the tof is increasing the ratio is increasing 0.7 then also we try not to extubate if patient can clench the teeth and prevent the removal of wooden spatula right a masseter muscle strength is detected by this then the tof is more than 0.86 near to 0.9 and this is the good tof for extubation this is teeth clench to prevent the removal of wooden spatula we put wooden spatula between the teeth and ask the patient to clench it and we try to move it and patient prevents it if patient is able to prevent it then adequate muscle recovery has happened adequate most sensitive to ensure adequate recovery got it okay now so tof ratio is what we are seeing and it is mostly used for non depolarizing neuromuscular blocker not for succinylcholine right this fade would seen in non depolarizing neuromuscular blocker not with depolarizing neuromuscular blocker where would be a constant response okay okay so these were the questions which i wanted to discuss in this pyq session thank you